What up, nerds? Today I am doing the Nerdy Narrative Tag. This is a tag that was created in honor of one of the loveliest persons on Booktube, and that would be Leslie from the Nerdy Narrative, who always starts one of her videos with, what up, nerds? And I, I apologize that I probably did that really badly, Leslie, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I did my best. Anyway, this tag was created by Codex Cantina. I will put a link in the description below to their original video, and I was tagged by none other than Alan from the Library of Alexandria. so I will put uh, a link to his version of the nar nerdy narrative tag as well, and you should go check out Leslie's version of it too, actually. Why don't I just put a, uh, a link in the description to that as well? Might as well, right? So. Let's get started with this tag. It's a lot of fun and so is Leslie. So this is a lot of fun. I, I am late to the party here as, as usual. The party is actually is, is long gone, but here I am. So uh, I, I, well, better late than never, right? So anyway, the, uh, Leslie does a lot of different stuff on her channel. She covers science fiction and horror and fantasy and comics and manga. So a lot of the questions are related to those various genres. So let's begin with number one. Science fiction. What is a futuristic or imaginative element in a book that you are glad is not real? Well, uh, there's a lot of uh, possibilities for that one. Let me go with the Death Star from the Star Wars movies. Good thing that's not real because we don't want any um, planet destroying technology out there, right? We wouldn't certainly wouldn't want it in the wrong hands or really in any hands at all. So I'm going to go with the Death Star. Uh, that's a chilling moment, isn't it? When they blow up a whole planet of people, that's just... Ugh. So anyway, number two, horror. Okay, so what has been the scariest moment for you while reading a book? So I'm not really very well read in the horror genre. I've read a few of the classics but uh, I would have to say that one of the most scary moments for me in any book at all, and this is more of a dystopian book, it's not horror, would be in 1984, there is a certain scene where a character who is being questioned slash tortured has a, is being tied down and, 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 or put in a chair and tied up and has a, a, a cage put on his face with a rat in the cage a flesh-eating rat, yeah. So that, for whatever reason, I read that book in high school and that has stuck with me ever since as kind of a, ugh, not something I would like. Yeah, little tiny teeth, nibble, nibble, nibble. No thanks. So <laughs> that's my, my choice for the uh, scariest moment, I guess, because that has really stuck with me. Number three, fantasy. What would you import from a fantasy world into our own world. I love this question. There are so many possibilities for this, being a fantasy guy myself. Uh, of course, magic would be an obvious answer, but what kind of magic? So lots of possibilities there. You know what I'm going to go with, though? I'm going to go with something that is very special to me. Lothlorien, the forest. I love forests. I love trees. I have a, I have a forest right behind where I live, and I walk in it every day. I love hiking. So... If I could go to Lothlorien, wow, I think I would be the happiest fellow on the planet. So yeah, that's what I would do. I would take all of Lothlorien, plop, put it here in my backyard. I wouldn't mind a few elves running around in there too. That would be nice. Yeah, we could meet some elves, say hi to Galadriel and, and, and company. So yeah, that would be cool. Okay, uh, comic, comic and manga. Uh, what's a comic you enjoyed? or one you have wanted to check out. So, I have never read a manga. I keep meaning to do it at some point. I've gotten some great recommendations for manga. Um, and at one point I will, I think one of my daughter has read is One Piece, I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's one, and I heard about one called Berserk, because I like Viking stuff. So, I don't know, we'll see uh, eventually. But definitely, I, I've talked about this before on the channel. Uh, there are some comics that I loved as a kid. I was actually, I've showed off my comic book collection in one of my videos, uh, but the X-Men and Spider-Man were my favorites. So those, that would be my answer, uh, the X-Men and Spider-Man. I especially loved Among the X-Men, I was a big fan of Nightcrawler. So yeah, I like those agile 
creepy guys, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Spider-Man and Nightcrawler are my favorites. So anyway, let's go on to number five, literary fiction and classics. What's a classic book that you've been meaning to get into but haven't yet? Huh. So this was tough. I, I, I have to think about this one because I've, there are a lot of, I read a lot of classics uh, and there are probably a lot of ones that I still need to read. But the first thing that I think of when I read this question is without a doubt, certain uh, traditions of mythology. I'm pretty well read when it comes to Greek mythology and, and throw the Roman in there as well. And the um, Hindu mythology and of course, Norse mythology, I'm probably the best read in that one. So there are certain ones that I'm really well read in, but there are others that I really want to read more in, like East Asian mythology and African mythology and Native American mythology. So I would be very excited to read more within those traditions. So that's, that's kind of a broad answer to that, but that's my most honest answer. So yeah, I would love to read more in those mythologies. So that is something I've been meaning to do and haven't gotten to yet. So, The Busy Bee, this is number six. The Busy Bee, what book would you like to share with all your friends? I think I've answered a question very like this before in another tag. I forget exactly which tag or what the question was, but I'm gonna give the same answer, which is The Heart of the Buddha's Teaching by Thich Nhat Hanh. This was a book that brought me much peace. And I am not a practicing Buddhist or anything like that, but I just really enjoyed reading that book and it gave me some wonderful insights onto how to conduct myself, how to get along with other people, how to be at peace with myself and, and my mortality and so many other things. And if I think more people would read that book, the world would be a better place. So that is the book that I would choose at this moment to give to everyone I know, The Heart of the Buddha's Teaching. Absolutely a meditation while reading that book. I felt so at peace while reading that book. And I'm gonna read it again soon, actually. I just enjoyed it so much. Okay, let's move on to number seven, influencer. If you could have influenced an author to make a different decision in a book, what would it have been? So uh, probably quite a few good answers to this question. One that I read fairly recently. I wouldn't, by the way, I wouldn't uh, answer this question with a book that I didn't like. I would not even bother. If there were so many things wrong with the book, I wouldn't even bother. So I'm gonna answer with a book that I actually did like, but there was, I think, something that could have been uh, a decision I would have made differently. Let's put it that way. So, uh, and this is from The Burning God by R.F. Kuang, the uh, conclusion to the Poppy War trilogy. There's, I'm not going to give any spoilers away here. Uh, I'll be a little vague about this, but there's a certain buildup to something big that doesn't really happen. So there's kind of a shift in direction there that I would have advised against, that I would have done more with the thing that the narrative was building up to. I talk about that in my review of The Burning God and the Poppy War trilogy as a whole, so I won't get into details here, but that's the one thing, and I did love that trilogy. I thought it was great. A lot of great things about it, but that is one thing I would say, uh, maybe it would be good to do more with the thing we've been building up to for so long. So yeah, that's my answer to that. And next one is the birthday wish, because I think this tag was created in honor of Leslie's birthday. So I think that's why this question is here. Happy birthday, Leslie. It's probably been uh, a long time since your birthday, but happy birthday anyway. Uh, let's see, so here's the question. What book uh, do you want for your birthday? Ooh. Wow, I have to just say one? Can I, can I say a few? Uh, so I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to answer with some books that I, I'm gonna be needing soon. I have a bunch of books that I have not read yet, um, like you know, Evan Winters, The Burning uh, uh, Trilogy or series, whatever that is, and uh, I have the first book in that, um, uh, Rage of Dragons. Uh, so, and I have some others like, um, oh gosh, I have a bunch I have to read. So ones that I don't have yet though, that I definitely intend to read soon. Uh, the rest of Robin Hobbs, The Realm of the Elderlings. I have the two first trilogies. I have the Farseer trilogy and I have the Life of Traders trilogy, but I don't have the rest of those books, so I need to get those because I love Robin Hobbs writing and I'm definitely gonna finish reading all of those eventually. Uh, I need to get the second collection of the uh, Bocalane and Corbel Brooch short story or novella collection, so there, there's uh, they've been collected into two volumes, volume one and two. I have to get volume two. 
And uh, there's a story in there that I really am looking forward to uh, because uh, my uh, friend AP inspired, AP Canavan inspired one of the characters in there. So I definitely need to get a hold of that. Uh, so, and what else do I need? Uh, the Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe. I want to get uh, Senlin Ascends by uh, Josiah Bancroft. I have a, too many, too many. I'll just go with The Realm of the Elderlings for my answer there. I don't want to get too greedy. So what do we have next? Uh, we have the invite, number, number nine. This is the end of the tag. Uh, so I have to tag somebody. Who are you inviting to your booktube party? Uh, tag some friends to share cake with. So uh, like I said, I'm late to this <laughs> uh, tag. <laughs> so I don't know how many people have, uh, are left not to do this tag. I, I'm gonna tag somebody that actually, so I had the honor of having Leslie on my channel once. And we had a great discussion with two other booktubers. I don't know, but I think Joanna was probably tagged already. If you weren't tagged already, Joanna, I'm, I'm tagging you. Um, but I'm pretty sure Sun has not been tagged for this yet. Or at least she, I don't think she's done this video yet. So I'm tagging Sun from Sun and Mood Reads. So I think that would be fun because I had a great time with Leslie and those two talking about our top five fantasy books. So I think it would be great to tag them if they haven't done it yet. So that's why I'm tagging, and thanks so much for watching this. I have I didn't even know what tags were when I started my channel, and I've done a few of them now, and they're kind of fun. <laughs> they're fun uh, in, the, in the sense of meeting new booktubers and, and that sort of thing. So thanks so much for watching. I will be back very soon with a book discussion I'm very excited about, and I hope to see you there. Until next time.